So tell me a little bit about Antio. Um, Antio is the like the baby. You know, me and my husband uh, talked about Antio actually all the way back to 2016. But we, it was just a thought in our head. We were we um, got engaged in 2016, and then um, we didn't think about it anymore. And then in 2017, when we were really looking at uh, something to either invest in or a business to start. And I asked him, I said, if you had something that you would do, you know, what would you do? And he said, I would open a tequila company, but you can't do that. And I was like, why not? You know, and he was like, I mean, you know, he was really skeptical. And then two days later, I found some information and really that's kind of how I started. Wow. I mean, <laughs> An idea to fruition yeah. in a matter yeah. of time. Um, yeah, I just start looking, you know, I, I Googled it and I, I tell people, they're like, well, how did you start it? I was like, by Google and email. Right. <laughs> because I don't know how a lot of businesses get started in 2020 or yes. you know, like in 2016. Um, so what steps did you take to actually get started? Um, what I did was first I found out kind of a process, you know, there was very little information online about starting a tequila company. There's a lot of information on starting wine or starting vodka, but not really a tequila company. So I did find a little um, interview with someone about it and they kind of did some steps. So that gave me a starting point. And then I Googled, you know, uh, distilleries who would make our tequila, you know, and um, I reached out to several of them and then it got narrowed down to two. And then the one that we work with now, um, they had no minimums and everything. Cause some have minimums, like you have to order like 5,000, you know, cases. We were just starting out. We didn't know what we were doing. We can't do 5,000 cases. Right. So the distillery that we work with now, they had no minimum. And so, you know, we started that way. And then, you know, my husband was a little bit skeptical, so I had the distillery send us samples for the base. And then he was like, yeah, they're probably going to be nasty, you know, and everything. And we, I was like, OK. When we got them, they were actually good. Wow. So he was surprised and he was like, OK, this might be something we can do, you know. So then we just start talking about it, um, the pl favorite flavor profiles that we wanted to do. And here we are. <laughs> Did you actually fly down to Jalisco to? No, no, because at that time, the election had happened and a lot of stuff. Our our uh, <laughs> thing with the Mexican government wasn't that uh, strong, I don't think, at the time. Right. There was also a lot of kidnappings and stuff, you know, cartel stuff going oh, on. Okay. Okay. We were like, oh, we're not going to go down there right now. <laughs> okay. Have you been down since or? No, I've been there um, in the past for work, um, for my uh, my day job, but um, for the tequila, no, not yet. Yeah. We still plan to go. Go. We were going to go this year, but you know, yeah, sort of. That's everybody's plans up. <laughs> so, how did your friends and family react when you told them you were starting this tequila company? I mean, it's not every day a black woman is like, "Yes, let me." I mean, maybe it is, but not one who actually goes through with it. You know what? Just sometimes just with anything, you know, some family, friends, some are supportive and some are just like, OK, you know, they're just like, OK, yeah, you know, they give you that. OK, <laughs> you know, um, but my family was all, always used to me doing a business anyway, because I had a, a couple of previous businesses. So they were used to me, you know, as in Detroit, I'm, I'm in Detroit, raised in Detroit. We always have some sort of hustle going on. So. Um, or other side business going on. So they were used to that. So they were just like, oh, okay, you know, if she says she's going to do it, she's going to do it. So I love yeah. that. So you're sort yeah. of a serial entrepreneur. In a way, in a way. <laughs> um, have you encountered any uh, roadblocks in uh, the tequila business as a black woman or as a woman in general? As both, I think, um, just because it uh, the spirits industry is a male dominated industry and tequila definitely definitely is. And it's also more of a, you know, Latin culture, Mexican culture 
um, type of spirit. So there is a lot of that. You know, I encountered it more when meeting with people like at stores and stuff like that, especially because I'm a woman. They don't think I know what I'm talking about. And then I found out that when I start talking to them, and giving them information, they were like, I think they probably thought, oh, she know more, she knows more than me, even right. just, not just tequila, but spirits, period. And right. you know how sometimes you're talking to someone and they kind of are talking condescending to you. And then you start giving information, you start, you know, spewing what you know, and then that tone changes. Right. So I've seen that a lot, you know, and it's just like, yeah, see, you thought I didn't know what I was talking about. So yeah. So how long did it take you to um like from your idea to getting your first bottle, like how long was that process? Our process took about 11 months. And usually we do know a couple of tequila brands that have taken a couple of years. So we did hear from several of them that you guys were moving, you know, um, because there's a lot of legal and compliance stuff that you have to go through. Um, not only do we have to work with our government in the US, we have to work with the Mexican government as well because our contracts have to be approved by the Mexican government, which can take three to four months. Wow. Um, and if they decide, if they had decided at that point, then we probably wouldn't be here um, because we have to have a contract with the distillery and it has to be approved by our government in order to ship anything out of there, import anything out. Has and then, improved at all throughout the process? <laughs> no. <laughs> long process, but the thing is, we have a contract for over 10 years, so we only had to go through that that one time. Oh, you know, okay. we, we got a minute before we have to um, get it reapproved. But then working with U.S. government, we have to get permits, you know, wholesaler permits, uh, importer permits, um, all of this licensing. Um, and then there's a lot of compliance as well. Um, it's It's... It's a lot, you know, I don't know if people understand that when they see a bottle on the shelf, especially tequila, because it is highly regulated, that it's a lot of components that go into it to get it on the shelf. So for us to do it in 11 months, that was actually very fast. Wow. So we got our first bottle in hand in 11 months. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, so tell me about that process. So you got your flavors, your samples back from the, the distillery. Um, how, how many times did you have to go back and forth um, to figure out your profile, your flavor profile? Well, our first, because we came out with our coconut lime and we came out with our reposado first. We only came out with two expressions at that time. And I, had, yeah. I know. I, you know, I have to ask you how it went. Oh my gosh. I, I didn't have my party, but I tasted it as soon as I got it. Yeah. And it is very smooth. I yeah. enjoyed it a lot. Like I can drink it by itself. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, and it's funny because, you know, people that we've we've come in contact with, especially even if they don't like coconut, they were like, but I actually like that though. You know, because yeah. it's not, not strong, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um for the reposado, it took about, I think it was three tries. Um, we had the base and they were like, okay, so we want to smooth it out a little bit. We want to add a little bit because we did add a little bit of caramel to it and we added a little bit of vanilla oh. because I wanted it to be, you know, palatable for women as well. You know, yeah. because tequila is a better spirit to drink, especially for me. Um, I'm a pancreatic cancer survivor. So it's a little bit better if I'm going to drink and, you know, I'm not really supposed to, but yeah. <laughs> if you're going to drink, I need to drink something a little bit better for me. And um, I wanted it to be palatable for women because, you know, women can drink and sip and, and enjoy, you know, a good drink, just like a good scotch, a good whiskey. Yeah. You know, okay. we don't have to have fruity drinks all the time. We don't have to have mixed drinks all the time because the mixed drinks are actually have sugar in them. A lot of sugar. It's a yeah. lot of calories. Yeah. So, you know, I wanted to make us something that we could do neat and sip as well. Um the coconut lime is a natural coconut lime. So that's why it's not very strong. A lot of the drinks that have a strong coconut is a synthetic. Okay. So we wanted a natural extract. We got the natural extract from the coconut meat and a natural lime extract. And that took about four tries because the first time it was like too much coconut. Then the second time it was, wasn't enough lime and everything. So it was about the fourth one. And we we're like, okay, we think this one is it. And yeah, that was done by FedEx. Wow. <laughs> like, you know, sending the samples and everything like that. So yeah, it took a couple of tries. 
Wow. So you said you've been around since, I guess, 2016? We thought of, we first thought of it in 2016. We actually got serious about it in 2017. We did not get the bottle until August of 2018. That's when it when we launched it, August of 2018. So we're going on two years. Is this what you do full time? Like you're working on this? No, my husband does. Um, um, and that's a whole other story because he left corporate, the corporate America. He was a uh, director of operations at his company and he left. You know, and of course, family and friends are like, what? Like, wait a minute. You know, you left this high paying salary, you know, to work on some tequila. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, no, I still am. I'm a financial analyst, so I still work um, eight to four. And, uh, you know, but I'm working on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working. <laughs> um. So do you have any advice for anyone who's looking to start their own spirits brand? Um, you know, definitely research, you know, research. And if you do know someone, you know, if they're willing to do so, you know, reach out and ask some questions, you know, see maybe where you should start so you can at least have a starting line and not, you know, be funneling around and not know where to go. Um, just so you can have a start, but definitely research and find out all you can and just do it. You know, don't don't hem and haw and don't, you know, procrastinate and be like, oh, no. And don't let if if you're passionate about it, and you really want to do it. Don't let someone talk you out of it either. Yeah. Were you at the uh, black owned wine and spirits festival last year? No. OK, because no. um, I wanted to ask you, like, how have you networked with other black spirits producers? And, you know, if so, how have you found that to be like a helpful resource for you, other spirit makers? I haven't yet. Um, I have gotten in touch with several within the last maybe six, six to nine months. You know, we're becoming aware of each other, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I, I have had a couple reach out and like, hey, you know, I want to help promote, you know, and stuff like that. And I was like, absolutely. You know, I'll help promote as well because none of them are tequila either. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, hey, <laughs> you know, I can definitely, you know, promote you. But no, I haven't really talked to them yet. Um, you know, just to get any advice or anything, but, you know, I'm, I'm definitely looking for, or maybe creating, you know, a coalition of, you know, our women of color um, who are in the spirits industry, because yeah. I think that would be, you know, something that would be good to do. I think there are more, as time goes on, there are more, you know, women and black people in general getting involved in uh, developing mm -hmm. spirits. Um, when I made my list of spirits, I was shocked. I didn't realize there were so many. Um, yeah. And then I went to the liquor store and I can't find them, yeah. um, which is troubling for me. Um, so yeah. do you have recommendations for how we can get and feel and other spirits on the market? Well, it depends. Like our tequila, actually, we just want today, I think my husband put on a website that we are able to ship to 38 states now. We have a store that um, is here that ships. So, you know, we have been, we were working on that pre-COVID and then COVID happened and everything kind of shut down and kind of delayed that. Um, so they do have our product and they do ship to 38 states. So that ability is there now. They're, are they a distributor or they're just like a store? No, they're a store here um, because Michigan is a control state. So it's a little different. Like oh, Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. Not, <laughs> yeah um, you know, so it's a little more difficult. Like even here, they can't ship here within Michigan. You have to actually go pick it up, but they can ship to other states. But the person needs to know the laws of their state to know if they're going to be able to get it or not. Because if you're in a control state, you might not get it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I found that out during COVID as I was trying to buy some black spirits. I'm like, what? It's every other state except Maryland. Yeah. I had some research. I, was like, oh, I think it's 16 or 18 control states now. And they all have something different. Like some of them are wine and spirits. Some of them are just wine. Some of them are just spirits. And then maybe spirits over this amount of ABV. It's like, it depends on the state. And once you start researching, you're like, oh my God, all of them are different. Right. <laughs> Yeah, you, know, I mean, you don't know. You're like, really? Every state has its own thing. 
Yes, yes. And they have their own laws. They have their own compliance and requirements um, because we work with the company that handles all of that. I don't have the time to even try to even phantom to get that information and try to learn that information. Would that be your distributor that you work with? We so here in Michigan, we do have a, a distributor. We have an ADA and a distributor because in Michigan, as a control state, we have to have them. But we do have an importer, okay. and they do work as our distributor in a couple of states. Um, they're MHW, so they basically get our tequila from Mexico, mm -hmm. imported to the U.S. Um, and we are in California, and they are our distributor in California. They are distributor in Florida, and we're working on New York and New Jersey because New York is. It's a whole bunch to do with New York to get, really? <laughs> to get in New York. Yeah, it's a big process. Wow. Yeah. New York is yeah. <laughs> and and like Pennsylvania is a control state too. And they're like they own the state owns all the liquor stores. Okay. So. So I know Virginia is sort of like that as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. So how yeah. did you guys choose like what distributor distributors you were gonna work with? Um and like other companies that you're gonna work with, like you feel like it has to be a good match? Do they have to understand and feel, you know? We do, like in Michigan, we really only had a couple to choose from. <laughs> it's only three ADAs in Michigan and it's only like three big ones in Michigan. Um, we went with the new kid on the block because we kind of felt at the bigger ones, we might get lost in the shuffle, especially because we were new, you know? Yeah. So we wanted to get with the, uh, the new kid just because we thought they were focused on us a little bit more. Um, it's kind of like we had to prove ourselves because initially, no, they didn't do a lot. Um, they did guide us very well, though. So I did get a lot of information. I was able to ask questions and find more information about what we needed. Um, and when my husband and I told them we're going to be like the biggest selling tequila that you have here in Michigan, this is when we came out, of course. Now they know it. You know, so we've proven that um, in Michigan. So, um, you know, it, it has to be a, a good fit. We did, though, just the other day, get one of the biggest distributors in the country reach out to us. So that's something we were looking for. Yeah, because we were like, when we started, we were like, they're going to have, we wanted to get to the point where they're going to come looking for us. Yeah. They're coming to look for us now. So, you know, we're excited. So we're, we're going to go through that process. And if we're able to partner with them, we will be in over 44 states. So then that way our product will be actually in the stores there and they won't have to be delivered online, you know, from online. They'll actually be in the store and you can just go pick it up. Yes, that is my goal. <laughs> like with this, you know, recently, obviously with the death of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, you know, there's yes. this uh, ground swell of, support for black businesses. And so yeah. um, when I thought, when I started thinking about black owned spirits, I'm like, why do I, why don't I see them on my shelves? Um, and yeah. so I really wanted to talk to uh, brand owners like yourself, just to see like what the problem is. Like, how can I get the word out about Antiel and get it on my shelf here in Baltimore? Yeah. Um, I think it's just about awareness, you know, because I don't even know if people knew so many, you know, brands were owned by, you know, black people, you know, and because um, I found out so many myself and I've been like, oh, yeah, you know, and, you know, I want to support, you know, so um, I think it's about awareness, you know, because I don't think people think too much that black people actually own the companies. I think they may think they're a brand ambassador or they just kind of work for them. Um, so you got to kind of research, but when you find it, absolutely. You know, I want a directory. Like I saw Beyonce just put out a black business directory. Yes. I was like, hey, can yes. you put a leader on there? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I saw a restaurant and bars. I was like, can you put some liquor on? <laughs> yeah, yes. Did she put it on there? Because she should. I no, know. no, it's not on there. I was like, I you think I got to reach out to my PR person and be like, hey, you should reach out to Beyonce because it's say who, who was cultivating that list. I was like, hey. Yeah. So you work with a PR person. That's great. Yes. Um, We've been working with her mm, nine months, almost a year now. Okay. She's been awesome. She um got me a Forbes. I was in Forbes in April. Congratulations. Thank you. That, that was awesome um, to be in Forbes. Um, she just got us a wine enthusiast, and that has been getting 
a lot of attention as well because that's a big following. Um, and we've gotten, you know, a lot of press. So, you know, I hope to keep it going. Yeah. Know, and yeah. moving forward. So, and she's, you know, black woman, owns our own PR firm, you know. We yeah, support. I love that. Yeah. So where can people find NTO? Oh, I wanted to ask you before you answer that, you had uh-huh. a name change. Yes. 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 Why you changed your name? Um, so many reasons. We, as we were getting bigger, and we do have our eye on going international. Um, and Teal actually works better with our story and our logo. Uh, and Teal is actually the name for an Antillian hummingbird. We there are two species that we do know of: Antillian um, mango and Antillian something crested hummingbird. And our logo is a hummingbird. And so we wanted it to go better with our logo, our story. And also my husband has another company called Teak Life, uh, where he actually is a social media influencer for the liquor industry. So he does reviews for liquor and stuff. So a lot of people kept getting our tequila mixed up with that company. And they were calling it Teak Life Tequila and stuff like that. And we were like, no, 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 no. So we're like, let's go ahead and separate because as we're getting bigger, we want to have a total separation between the the names. Right, right. And it, like I said, it just goes with the story. It's a hummingbird. Yeah, I like it. I mean, and yeah. it's always on your website. Um, so yeah, it's good for people to know. Yeah. Um, so where can people find Antio? Antio is at antiltequila.com. So we did um, change our website to that as well. Um, so it's A-N-T-E-E-L tequila.com. And there we have on our, I know my husband just changed it. He just showed me, uh, we have a store locator for here in Michigan, but now we put on there about online ordering with the store that sends out orders in 38 states and he lists all the states. So all you have to do is go on buy now and you can go ahead and order you some tequila. Awesome. Is there anything you want people to know about your brand that you want to share? Um, Just, you know what, just with any brand, any black owned brand or any brand that's out there, go ahead and try it. You never know. I mean, a lot of people, whether we've, we found just speaking with people, you know, coconut lime is not, it is the world's only coconut lime. So people are like, uh, eh, you know, really hesitant, but then they try it and like, Oh shoot, that's not what I thought, you know? <laughs> and then, you know, but just try it because everyone has a tequila story. Everybody has the tequila story on spring break. Cause they have that. I took that shot of tequila and I don't want to drink tequila. I ain't drank tequila in 20 years. And, you know, we have to kind of educate. And I, I, I usually ask people, well, what else were you drinking that day? You know, and then they talk about all this stuff, gar- uh, garbage, the garbage pail drink, all that stuff. And I was like, okay, so, but you blame tequila because that was the last thing you remember. But you forget <laughs> all that sugar that you drank the whole day. Yeah. And you ended it with a tequila shot, and that made you sick. I'm like, probably the rest of it. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, much sugar. <laughs> as I'm getting older, I'm realizing, you know, I gotta keep my sugar intake yeah. down. Um, you yeah. know, watch your weight. You don't want yeah. it. You know, that sugar. Your- first, it adds weight because I can't even drink wine as much anymore because I used to love some wine, but I can't drink it as much because it's so much sugar because I didn't like dry, you know, dry wines. I, of course, I'm Moscato and all that <laughs> wines and everything, which are sweet, you know, but they really mess with you as you get older. And that sugar is what caused the headaches. That sugar is what yeah. caused the throwing up. It's just yeah. it's the weight gain and everything. And that's why with our tequila and that's why we're trying to educate people a good tequila because all tequilas aren't premium because people throw Jose Cuervo at me all the time. And I'm like, you're talking, I'm usually talking about Jose Cuervo Gold, which is a mix dough, which is half tequila. I mean, half sugar. Oh, it's wow. 49% agave nectar, which is sugar, and 51% tequila, a low grade tequila at that. So that's why you need to get sick off of some Jose Cuervo Gold, really. Right. How do you know? So, like, how did you <laughs> learn so much about various brands? Just researching what we're doing, you know, and then of course we have to try out the competition, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we have to talk about the competition. I mean, Jose Cuervo does have some premium tequilas, but you know they're up in the price range, right. you know. 
And most people are like, well, I'm not paying that much, but just like with a good scotch or a good whiskey or good vodka or something, it's going to cost a little more for a premium drink, you know, and I'm getting older now. I'll get a bottle for $45. So I'm drinking some premium and not getting a headache. I'm not trying to throw up everywhere anymore. Yeah. You know, that was my point. <laughs> right. you know? But yeah, what I want people to know is just try it, you know, and if someone is talking to you, especially me, if I'm talking to you about tequila, just be open and learn about it and, and not just be like, oh no, because it's tequila as we hear. Yeah. You know? No, it's not. You know, it's actually better for you because it is made from a plant. It's gluten-free. It's naturally gluten-free. You know, it's lower in calories than most drinks by themselves. You know, right? It's the only. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a upper. You know, and it is a probiotic, and you know, it it helps in a lot of ways. So Mm -hmm. you know, but because they have that story and they have that that memory, they can't get past it. Some people can't. Some people have. I have. I have uh, talked some people into it, and they're like, "Okay, you're right. Okay, this is good." I mean, with your products, it really does. It shouldn't take much much convincing because it, it really yeah. is delicious. I was like pleasantly surprised when I took a shot of it. Good, good. Yeah. And you know what? Really chilling it, chilling, especially the coconut lime. You chill it. You can you can totally drink it by itself. Uh, sometimes I'll add a splash of pineapple juice or something just to give a little bit. But you know that you know how they make um when you have mimosas and you want only a little bit of orange juice, like right. a little. Yeah. <laughs> Just for some color. <laughs> I actually made one of the drinks off your website. Um, Thank you. Awesome. Adamore, I think was the name. Um, and it's delicious. Okay. Some orange juice and some lime, lemon juice. And um, yeah, your tequila was delicious. Thank you. The Blanco is good as well. Chill, you know, so that's something. And we do have a new flavor that'll be coming out. It'll be oh. another world's only. Oh. Um, so looking maybe August, September, I think. Oh, do you want to tell what the flavor is or is it a secret? I'll whisper it to you. It's blood orange. The oh. only <laughs> world's only. <laughs> I <laughs> love anything blood orange, and I'm not yes. even gonna say that. Oh my god, I looked at a blood orange soda today in Trader Joe's. Um, yes, yes, so uh, and it is delicious. My husband was like, This is probably gonna overtake the coconut lime, so yeah. Oh my <laughs> gosh, I have to <laughs> get it mailed to me. Uh, you know, come hella hot water, I have to get it mailed to DC, maybe. <laughs> Absolutely, um, just because. You know what? We want to keep being innovative, um, keep trying to have things that are, you know, new. You know, we know somebody will probably come out with another coconut lime somewhere. Um, there are coconuts and there are limes, but none out there together, you know, mm-hmm. together. but we know somebody will probably try to come out with something. Um, and even, you know, with our new flavor, we know pr- probably if we're not going to be the first, we're going to be the best. <laughs> yeah. We're not the only, you know what I mean? So um, we definitely want to do that. Um, and people always ask us if we're coming out with an Yeho. Yes, but I want my Yeho to be two years and over. I want it to really be a good Yeho. So I'm still waiting on that. Awesome. I love your energy. You have a great, um, positive Thank energy you. that I really enjoy. And I feel Thank like um, it is going to serve you well in this business, or it probably, it probably already mm-hmm. has. Um, yeah, I hope so. You know, I I look to continue to talking to people, educating people about tequila or any other liquor because I've be I've become more versed also with my husband having the other business of being a liquor expert, period. Mm-hmm. You know, so he teaches me what he's learned, you know, him learning and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm always open to asking questions and, and truly people, you know, have been reaching out to me to say, Hey, how do I start this? How do I do this? And, you know, I'll answer, you know, I will, I will answer. I don't want, you know, I want people to live their dreams and I want them to go for it. So if I can give them some information to help them get it started. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, well, I look forward to, you know, seeing you at uh, maybe next year's uh, Black Owned Wine and Spirits Festival in D.C. I had heard about it. I think I put it on my list about something that I was going to look into. But of course, COVID happened and, you know, all of those things we kind of, yeah. like, okay, we're probably just not going to go in any of those yeah. things this year. So last year was my first year going. I think it's been running for three years now. Um, and it was great. Because I don't even think people realize how many are out there. 
So mm-hmm. just to get them all in one room, um, mm-hmm. it's amazing. Um, yeah, okay. so please look into that so I can come taste the blood orange. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Next year, hopefully we'll have it already out by then. So then, you know, yeah, you, you never know. We, we have your address. You never know. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anytime. <laughs>